presentation shared. Okay. So then I would like to welcome everyone to this uh, webinar. So um, the present uh, presenter today is the president-elect Anna Maria Simon Dietz. And uh, she's going to tell us about uh, the fantastic new achievement of EFLM, where we actually are inviting everybody to become EFLM Academy members. So um, please, Anna Maria, give your presentation. Thank you very much, Svera, for this nice introduction. And thank you all for being here with us this evening. Um, so for those of you just who are not maybe so familiar with EFLM, just a couple of words about EFLM organization. So we are a federation, as you may know, and our governing body is actually the general meeting, which is consisted of all voting uh, members, representatives of national societies, which actually constitute EFLM. Uh, our executive body is EFLM Executive Committee, and actually those who do the work are the EFLM functional units, a lot of committees and working groups. Uh, this is the EFLM Executive Board. Our current president is Michael Neumeyer from Germany, Svere Sandberg, who is the uh, moderator of this webinar uh, is the past president and I'm the president-elect meaning I will be uh, uh, become a president with January 1st next year and these are our other members Giuseppe Lippi the secretary uh, Huybet Storm from uh, Netherlands as a treasurer and we have two members at large uh, Tiago Guimaraes from Portugal and Tomas Zima from Czech Republic and this is our you know, heart and soul of EFLM, Silvia Cataneo, the actually EFLM office uh, secretary. Uh, in numbers, we are 40 full members, three affiliate members and one provisional member. Altogether, we represent some 22,000 European specialists in laboratory medicine. Um, as I said, uh, the most of the work is done by functional units and officers. This is altogether 220 people working uh, effortlessly day and night for the benefit of our profession, but also for the benefit of EFLM. And they all work in uh, many working groups, task groups, task and finish groups under five committees. And those committees are chaired by Daniel Rydell, who is also uh, providing a technical support for this webinar. Uh, Florent Van Stappel is chairing the Quality and Regulation Committee. Daria Pashalic is chairing Education and Training Committee. Uh, Eric Kilpatrick is chairing Science Committee and Gilbert Vieringa Profession Committee. Um, our aims, actually, FLM aims, if one, I mean, we, we have, of course, many uh, different aims, but the most important ones actually are to promote and improve science and education, to improve the efficiency and quality of safety and patient care, and the rest actually uh, relates to the um, advancement of the profession. So our aims in that respect are to represent our profession, which is clinical chemistry and laboratory medicine at European level and at many other occasions, to represent our professional interests, to promote the profession and to promote certification and registration. And at EFLM Academy, which we will be talking about this evening, actually relates to all these aims of uh, EFLM. Um, the first communication, we've been working a lot, actually, we have been considering this uh, um, initiative for quite some time already, but the time has been right this year. We felt that the time is right this year. And um, in July, uh, we have circulated the first announcement uh, about the Academy to all national uh, societies. And I hope that you have all received this letter. Um, and the aim of the webinar this evening is actually to give you more details about this exciting opportunity, which we will be launching starting with January 1st, 2020, so next year. So this evening I will uh, be uh, addressing the following questions. What are the aims of the Academy? What are the benefits of the Academy? So what, what benefits do you get if you join EFLM Academy? Who is eligible to join? How much does it cost? How to join? And when is the official launch of the Academy? 
So the aims of the Academy are actually to, to help you, to help all members of uh, EFLM national societies uh, in their professional growth. So to support your education, your training and continuous professional development by providing a unique, exclusive web-based resource. So it's actually what we've did is, what we've done is we've tried to build a resource that is web-based, as you will see, that will help you in your professional growth and development. Uh, so what benefits do you get if you join the FLM Academy? Well, you get free online subscription to CCLM Journal. You get unlimited access to all CLSI documents and standards. You get free access to EFLM webinars, meaning from January 1st until now, all EFLM webinars were free and you have had the opportunity to access them anytime for free. Starting from January 1st, those EFLM webinars will be closed and will be accessible only for the members of the EFLM Academy. The others will be able to access them, but uh, only uh, with, with, uh, with a fee. Um, one other very important uh, thing to, re to consider is the eligibility to apply for EFLM travel grants. So starting from January 1st, you know that EFLM actually gives a lot of travel grants for most major uh, European meetings and all EFLM meetings. Starting from January 1st, um, applications for EFLM travel grants will be allowed only for the members of the EFLM Academy. And last but not the least, we give you, a, once you become the member of the EFLM Academy, you are entitled to receive reduced registration fee for all EFLM events, starting with January 1st already. So all EFLM events that will be organized after January 1st will have different uh, registration fees for academy and non-academy members. Now, who is eligible to join the academy? Actually, academy is based on individual membership. So eligible are all individual members who are members of EFLM national societies. So anyone, if you are a member of the EFLM national society, you are eligible to join the Academy. There are many types, we know that mm, many societies can have different types of uh, membership. But we accept, so you are entitled to join the Academy regardless of the type of the membership of the National Society. So whether you are full, affiliate, corresponding, observing, or whatever type of membership you may be, as long as you are the member of any EFLM National Society, you are entitled to join the Academy. Um, what is also very important is that all um, degrees or all levels of education are uh, eligible. So your level of education is really not relevant. Whether you are, and this is very important, so academy is open to non-specialists. So you can be a non-specialist, you can be a bachelor of science, master of science, it doesn't matter. Regardless of your degree and level of education, if you are a member of the FLM National Society, you are eligible to join the academy. How much does it cost? The annual fee for the Academy is 15 euros. And the, the benefits have to be paid in advance for the forthcoming calendar year. So the payment is done for the calendar year, not for 12 months, the calendar year. So for 2020, if you want to enjoy benefits for the entire 2020, please make sure to pay until December 31st. Of course, you may pay later, but then you will not be enjoying the entire calendar year of benefits. This is, of course, up to you. So even those who join later and pay later will be uh, enjoying 2020 benefits. If you want to 
enjoy benefits for 2021, you have to pay until December 31st, 2020. How to join? So there are two ways to join the Academy. Uh, one is the automatic enrollment and one is the by individual application. We as EFLM prefer automatic enrollment because it's much easier for us, but also for you. Uh, we call automatic enrollment also block subscription and um, most of the work is actually done by National Society. So if the National Society decides to join the Academy, so to, to actually that all members of the society want to join the Academy through block subscription, then the National Society has to send the request to your film office and this is the address. And then the FLM office will send a memorandum of understanding to the National Society. And this memorandum of understanding has to be signed by National Society and EFLM. Once memorandum of understanding is signed, an annual fee payment is done. And this payment is managed by the National Society. All members of the National Society automatically become members of the Academy. And this is, as I said, preferred route of enrollment for EFLM. Of course, if a national society decides not to go along this way, every individual can also apply as individual through individual applications. And um, the way to do it is to go to EFLM website and under Academy, there will be starting from December 1st, a registration link where you can uh, actually application link uh, which you can click and submit your individual application. Now <clears throat> you've all maybe have made uh, have already are made aware of the EFLM register and this is just to avoid any confusion um, between EFLM register and EFLM Academy. You all know that the FLM register is actually the register of European specialists of laboratory medicine. And this register is actually one part of, or actually it belongs, it's a subset of members within the EFLM Academy. So while in EFLM Academy, members can be, as already mentioned a couple of slides uh, before, they, members can be non-specialists and Bachelor of Science and Masters of Science and any other types of members. These can be members of EFLM Academy. Those who are also specialists and meet some other criteria, which I will mention in a couple of seconds, they also belong to the EFLM register. In other words, those who meet the requirements for to become European specialists in laboratory medicine will be automatically enrolled into the EFLM register once they join the academy, right? At no additional cost. Now, this is something very important. From January 1st, 2020, joining the EFLM register will only be possible through application to the EFLM academy. So if you want to join the, the, the register, you have to join the academy. And then if you meet criteria to become entitled European Specialist for Laboratory Medicine, you will also be automatically enrolled into the EFLM register. Now, who is eligible to join the FLM register? This is not new. This is something ongoing for many years, but this is just maybe to remind those who are not so familiar with the FLM register. So all individuals who are able to meet equivalence of standards in education and training as follows are entitled and eligible to join the register. And those uh, criteria are minimum nine or ideally 10 years of um, education and training, out of which four to five years are academic and four to five years are specialist training. Second, education and training have to be in line with the FLM syllabus, meaning that master degree 
uh, that, that, that this individual has to have a master's degree or equivalent in medicine, pharmacy of, or science, and that this individual has to have exit qualification, uh, which has to be approved by obtaining the postgraduate certificate, which meets DFLM equivalence of standards. And last, this individual has to have uh, the evidence of participation in continuous professional development, CPD. If you have all these requirements met, you are eligible to join DFLM register. How to join the register? Well, again, just please be reminded, from January 1st, you will only be able to join the register by joining the academy, right? So on top of what you can do, just one second, sorry, that you can join the FLM register again by two routes. One is the automatic enrollment and the second is through individual application. Now, on top of what you have to do to automatically enroll the FLM Academy, if you want to also join the register, then National Society must, in addition to other things, which have already been mentioned, also submit the equivalent evidence that equivalence of standards can be met. So this is something additional if for those members for which um, uh, National Society wants that they are joined in the register. Now this uh, submission is going to be evaluated by the EFLM Committee for Profession and this evaluation takes time so please uh, be um, aware that it may last for even two months and once this equivalence of standards are approved all National Society members who meet the equivalence of standards criteria will be automatically enrolled as already explained before in the FLM register and will be recognized as European specialists in laboratory medicine. Of course, if you're, and this is again a preferred route for EFLM, so instead of uh, evaluating each and individual application, we encourage national societies to submit their equivalence of standards so that we can um, uh, uh, do the, we can um, enroll all members of the societies who meet equivalence of standards via block, block subscription to the register. If, however, National Society decides not to submit the equivalence of standards or the, the evidence that equivalence of standards are met, then each individual can submit individual application to be uh, admitted to the academy and to the register. So on top of your application for the academy, you have to submit a certain documentation if you want to be admitted to the register. And I will show this documentation for the register on the next slide. And this actually you can find on the FLM website. This is uh, copied and pasted from the FLM website. So necessary documents for the submission to the FLM register are your CV, um, evidence of the Master of Science qualification, uh, evidence for the EFLM recognized exit qualification and evidence of the continuous professional development. The official launch, as already said, that the registration for the Academy on the EFLM website, the link will be active on December 1st. So starting from December 1st, application should, shall be made possible for individual applicants. However, national societies are encouraged and welcome to send their applications or inquiries mail, email, by email to EFLM office uh, already now. And as soon as possible, the, the sooner the better. Launch of the Academy, the official date of the launch is January 1st, 2020. Now, one thing that came up uh, during the discussions about uh, the, this transition from the register to the, to the academy is uh, are the members who have already uh, uh, 
been enrolled into the register and who have paid for the five subsequent years. So what about those members? And the, the decision was that those members can enjoy all benefits of the FLM Academy until the end of the period covered with their subscription, which was 10 euros at that time when they paid uh, for the five-year subscription to the FLM register. So we hope that this uh, opportunity is uh, you find that you find it exciting and interesting, and uh, the Christmas time is uh, coming. So we felt that this is something maybe that um, you may wish uh, for Christmas in case that we have. Um, um, encouraged you to consider seriously joining the FLM Academy, please go to the FLM website and under EFLM Academy you will find anything, uh, all the necessary information that you need to know and also from December 1st there will be a link for individual applications. So um, if the EFLM Academy is all you want for Christmas, EFLM welcomes you and uh, thank you for helping us grow uh, our federation. Thank you. And um, our uh, host, moderator and myself will be now very happy to answer uh, all your questions. Yes, <clears throat> so thank you very much Anna Maria. This is uh, actually a great achievement uh, by EFLM and uh, offer great opportunities to all of our members. So I think that uh, are there any question, questions and we should uh, try to answer them. Uh, I will just start before you can type your uh, question into the chat box and uh, then we will see them and, um, and we can then uh, answer the questions. So uh, I will just start uh, Anna Maria. Uh, of course, I'm very eager to join this academy, uh, but should I wait for my national society to, to and role, or, sh or should I do, how, how should I handle that? Well, the, I think that, as, as already mentioned a couple of times in the presentation, I think that uh, the preferred route would be to encourage national societies to do the block enrollment. However, if for whatever reason, national society cannot make this decision, and this is maybe because some societies have their general assembly, uh, always in April, for example, and if there is a general assembly in April, then National Society is not able to do, make this decision right now. So I would then encourage individuals to make individual applications and maybe wait until National Society makes this a strategic decision to also join uh, uh, on a basis of the block enrollment. Yeah, and then we will get uh, refunded. Uh, the if I pay 15 euros, and my national society enroll, then I will sort out the difference in, uh, mm -hmm. in this fee. Well, this would, this would depend actually on, on the decision of the national society. Yeah. For example, our society has decided to do, Croatian society has decided to do the block enrollment, and we have actually increased the membership fee for 15 euros. So there, there was a, um, a quick survey, and the, all members of the society had the opportunity to declare whether they want to become members of the academy or not, and if they ticked yes, then they had to pay 15 euros more and then national society is only actually doing the uh, the payment and is managing the the transactions but there is no cost for for the national society but of course there are other ways as well and uh, Anna maria here we have some other questions uh, for example are national societies invited individually by the eflm um, i think they all have got an invitation to to join the academy by now so they all should know about it at least yeah, circulation has been sent to, to all national societies a couple of times. Uh, but it could be that some national representatives or president maybe did not, you know, have missed the email. If that is the case, we invite the individual colleagues who are attending this webinar this evening to contact the FLM office and then the FLM office will send them necessary information which they can then forward to, to the society um, executives. Yeah. And another question here is, uh, for example, if you have an, a society with 150 members, what is then the cost? And uh, I suppose that that's the, the cost of 150 multiplied by 15 euros. That would be the cost. 
Uh, but if only 15 of the National Society members want to join and 100 will not join, I suppose that then the, 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 the fee is one third or 50 yeah. multi multiplied by 15 euros. So it's, uh, it's easily, easy to, to calculate. Yeah, <laughs> so National Society actually pays only for those members who decide to join the Academy, not for the entire society. Only for those members who wish to become uh, members of the academy. So, and, and we have uh, another question because in some countries there there are several national societies that are affiliate or full members of the EFLM. And the question is, how many national societies are permitted to join? And I can just uh, tell you that everybody can join. All national societies, being affiliate, being whatever kind of membership can join with all their members. So, and I already got the message here from the Finnish Society uh, that they are very interested in joining the Academy. So that's very good. Yes, actually what we know from, from the contacts we had uh, since July is that already more than 10, I think 12 countries are going in that direction, which is almost one third of EFLM. And I think it's great. Um, so we encourage other societies which still are considering this opportunity to follow that path. So, so I, have, uh, I have just one question for you. Uh, because there are in, in some way there are two ways of enrolling on uh, block. You can enroll for the academy and you can also enroll for the European specialists. So of course you can, you can have only register for the academy and uh, that's okay. But you can also enroll on block for the specialist if you want to give uh, the, the information about how you educate, how your education is and uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And there are two memorandum of understanding. So depending on what you wish, you will, uh, you will of course, approach national um, uh, EFLM office and say, we want to enroll, for example, we are a society of 100 members, 30 want to join the register and the rest just want to join the academy. And then you will get two memorandum of understandings and two Excel sheets to enter the data for those who wish to join the academy and for those who wish to join the register. And then, um, you know, EFLM office will handle the, the membership and make sure that those who also meet the requirements for the register are enrolled into the register. Very good. And then I have an important question because, uh, of course, the whole world wants to join this academy. And we have a question from Canada. What about the non European societies? Can they join this academy? Yeah, well, we discussed it. And for the moment, we decided that this is the, only the opportunity for European national societies. However, we are open for ideas. And uh, Sverre, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but we just wanted to see you know, how this works. And uh, we may consider this opportunity in uh, a couple of years, maybe a year or two, but not for the moment, only FLM uh, European societies are welcome to join the academy. But, but I t actually, I think we have to, to readdress it and uh, discuss it again in the, in the board because of course we will not hide this uh, very important uh, possibility for non-European. So mm. in some way, but we have to readdress it and, yes. uh, and uh, think, think about it again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, I can see other other questions. You can type it, and I will uh, read it up. Do you have any questions, Anna Maria? Aye. Well, is <laughs> anyone from from the people who are attending um, uh, considering uh, to join, and is from the society which has not already um, expressed the interest to join uh, based on a block enrollment? Can we can we just hear your feedback? What do you think? And would you would you now after listening to this webinar would you join the academy? Uh, we, we see that one, Canada, uh, for example, yeah, now wants. To... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think uh, there is a lot of people who will join here, <laughs> of course. <laughs> Good. And the people who will not join, they will not. Uh, they they probably will not uh, answer this question on the chat. <laughs> And, uh, okay, so I'm, I'm biased. The, the question was biased. A, a question again from Canada about okay. individual enrollment. And uh, that's probably also difficult by now, Ana Maria. So we have to re readdress that 
uh, again, because you have to be a member of a national society that is a member of EFLM by now. Yes. So, uh, so unfortunately by now, but we will readdress this, uh, this question and we will come back to you. Yeah, but I know that um, you know, also people from uh, out of Europe can become members of national societies within Europe. For example, I know a colleague who is from the United States who is a member of the German society. So once you become the member of any EFLM national society, you are eligible to um, also uh, join the academy. So maybe this is the one way to go if you you may consider joining one of the FLM national societies for the time being. And as you said, yeah, Sarah, we will consider being, it and maybe find a way yeah. to, to also uh, open, yeah. open our door to other non-European countries as well, because otherwise, we want to be inclusive. We don't want to discriminate anyone. But otherwise, we have to change the definition of Europe, including <laughs> Canada and US and all. Absolutely. <laughs> That's also a possibility. Absolutely. So Silvia Cataneo from the EFLM office uh, says that she will be happy to answer any questions during the next days. So you can write directly to, to her for more information. And of course, Anna Maria and myself, we will also answer emails about these uh, things. Absolutely. There is one question, Svere. Um, let me see, there's a lot of things coming on. Uh, yeah. I think that the, yeah, the Turkish society will try to block enrollment or, or otherwise they will join individually. Mm -hmm. And of course, if, as Anna Maria said, it, it can take some time before the, the society make a decision and then you can, for the moment, for the moment just uh, enroll individually. Mm -hmm. And here is Dalius, and I talked to him the other day, yesterday, and this society has the General Assembly in April, and this was the, the example that I used, and now Dalius is thinking after this clear explanation that Lithuanian <laughs> society will manage to join before April. So absolutely. thank you, Dalius. Have a good evening, yeah, and that's, that's good news. It. Yeah, absolutely. So he will be responsible. <laughs> It's so good to hear that so many different uh, European countries are considering to join. And this is actually what we were hoping for because we really want to be very inclusive and um, the more we are, the stronger we are. So um, we, we will be really uh, very keen to have as many members as possible. Claudia Imperiali from um, Spain also considers to join. That's nice. Do we have some more questions maybe? Yes. Are there yes. any difficult questions that we can try to... I think the most difficult question we got until now was this about non-European <laughs> societies. So oh, good. Uh, Israel has applied to be recognized for the FLM register and has been approved. So hopefully Israel will also join the academy. Yeah. And I just repeat that... Uh, uh, I just repeat that uh, if there are more... Um, uh, societies in one country and they are in some way affiliated with um, EFLM, then all their members can join and they can join on, on block from that society. Yeah, absolutely. That is very important. Okay. Okay. If... Oh, there is one question. Yeah. Um, can I... So if the, if the, if you if you are a national society that are not any mem that you're in Europe that is not a member of EFLM, then you actually have to apply for EFLM membership to be uh, affiliated with EFLM. And of course, if you are a national society, you of course you just have to send some documents. And again, you ask uh, Silvia Catano in the office which documents is necessary, and you will can easily become an affiliated member with EFLM. Yes. To just send the first request to FLM office and then the rest is going to be in the safe hands of Sylvia. Absolutely. Okay. I think we have uh, exhausted all questions. Yeah, we have answered a lot of questions, so it's, uh, it's great. So we can wait 10 more seconds. So if you have some questions, <laughs> coming upon your mind before you go 
and have your dinner or go to bed, <laughs> and you can just uh, then you can go just tell us. Otherwise, make yourself a nice Christmas and. Uh, yeah, but remember before Christmas, before <laughs> December first and the Christmas twenty four or thirty one, you should register <laughs> this uh, exciting thing. <laughs> So that's uh, that's uh, the, the the good thing. There is one question: Is there a country that has two? <laughs> yes, there, there are a lot of countries who have more than one national societies, but there is only one national society that is the full member of EFLM, but and the, but the other uh, can be an affiliate member. So uh, all so all full members they they can they have the uh, possibility to vote in a general meeting. Affiliate members. Affiliate societies have all the other rights, also to participate in working groups, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and of course to participate in this uh, EFLM academy. Mm, another question: Does full membership no, no, rotate? No, no, it doesn't rotate. It's so, so if if there is one full member in a country, that would not uh, be changed. Uh, that's how the status in EFLM is now. So there's no rotation. And actually the full membership goes to the National Society, which has been recognized by the um, um, national government as the uh, leading entity in laboratory medicine. So this is something to be dealt with within the society. We as EFLM don't decide that. We just uh, get the... Um, uh, how to say approval from the national society that this society has been recognized as the leading one in laboratory medicine. Yeah. But of course, just to underline again, this is of no importance concerning the academy that we are talking about now, because whatever membership you have in EFLAM, whatever membership your national society has in EFLAM, they can, all their members can join the academy either on block or individually, but you have to be your national society or your society has to be a member of EFLM. That's the that's the only presupposition. And also the affiliate members, uh, affiliate society can have members in the European Specialist uh, Laboratory Medicine Register. Absolutely. Yeah, if they meet criteria for if the. If they register. meet criteria, of course. Mm -hmm. So that's good. We stick and give them 10 more seconds. <laughs> okay. Very patient. Very good. Very Yana, good, good, good to Thank see you. you here. You will spread the word. So that's good. We go out like the disciples and spread the word, word all over the world. That's fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you, Yana. <laughs> Have a nice evening. Very good. And yes, I will now just before dinner, I will start um, filling out my application, I think. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you for everyone uh, to participated on this. And we welcome you, everyone, as Academy members in EFLM to have a lot of interesting conversations and a lot of sharing of important professional topics and a lot of fun together. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.